during a lecture of a communist propaganda in the USSR, a speaker said, in the capitalist world, a person A is always exploiting a person B, but under communism, it is the other way around. In the capitalist world, each business has a direct relationship with its clients. If you buy my product, then the item goes to you and the money goes to me. Under communism, everything belongs to the government. You might be purchasing this product from my hands, but the item doesn't belong to me and your payment does not go into my pocket. The money goes to the government and then later government reimburses me for my work. But this is why the amount that I get for my work is not necessarily connected to the amount you paid for your purchase. So financial transactions under capitalism and communism might look the same. It's the same store, the same salesperson, but in reality they are different because of the government being the owner and because all the financial transactions are going not directly between two people, but through the government. How did they come up with this idea? Well, it's possible that it came from Judaism. The Torah is in favor of private enterprise, but it also places certain regulations on the economy. The Torah's financial laws is a very interesting topic, and our website, arielcenter.org, has many articles about it. But the idea of communism came not from the financial laws of the Torah, but from the part of the Torah that speaks about God's role in our lives. We all love thinking that we are in control of everything in our lives. But the experience shows that it doesn't always work this way. We see that not so smart people who don't put much effort into their work sometimes end up ahead of their much brighter friends who work much harder. Some people have bigger challenges in their lives than others. Thinking that our skills and efforts are the only factors determining our success is naive. Even after people earn a lot of money, they sometimes lose it to unforeseen expenses. Why is it? The Torah says that God, and only God, runs this world. There is no other power besides for Him. That means that we get our money not from our clients or from our bosses. It only seems like we get our money from them. Really, they come to us from God but he gives it to us through other people. This is why the amount of money we make is not always directly connected to our work. God has other factors that he considers when he decides how much money we deserve. So we see that communism puts government in a role that Torah ascribes for God. Because communism has this entity, which is called government, that owns everything. And even though it seems like financial transactions are direct, but really they are going through this third entity that runs everything. This explains why communism does not allow belief in God and why it demands a total obedience of the government. Because communism places government in the role of God. So why doesn't communism work? Because the laws of economics should be learned from the part of the Torah that speaks about the economics, not from the part of Torah that speaks about God. No one can replace God, even the government.